We are very excited about our speaker this week, uh, Dr. Johnny Ray Lewis. Uh, I believe this is his fourth time being with us. Uh, he first time in this sanctuary, and uh, we praise God for him. He is a native of Texas. He accepted Christ at an early age at the guidance of his grandfather. Uh, Johnny is a humble servant and gifted servant of God whose ultimate goal is to do the will of God. Dr. Lewis served honorably as a veteran in the United States Armed Forces as a weapons technician. His education includes a degree in business management from the University of Toronto, a Master of Theology and a Doctor of Divinity from Slidell Baptist Seminary in Slidell, Louisiana. He has been ministering for over 23 years on the gospel field for Jesus Christ. Beginning in 1998, he pastored uh, Wayland Baptist Church in Eufaula, Oklahoma, Shady Grove Baptist Church in Roland, Oklahoma, and Mount Zion Baptist Church in Eufaula, Oklahoma. Currently, he is evangelized for Christ wherever he is called. He and his wife, Natalie, have been married for 26 years. They have one adult daughter, two adult sons, and six grandchildren. He enjoys studying, preaching, and teaching the Word of God, and he further enjoys time with his family and relaxing. So after Phil comes, uh, we, we just, uh, Johnny, we, we are just so excited about you and your wife being here this week, and uh, we're just praying for a strong movement of God this week. Thank you. Church, say amen. First of all, giving honor to the Father, to his Son, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, to all you, my sisters and brothers in Christ, to the pastor of this church, Pastor Franklin, to his wife, to all the officers. It is indeed good to be here. Amen. I was listening to that young man sing that song. He does it so easy. He had like a... There's no strain to a beautiful, beautiful voice. Amen. I was telling my wife, and I'm going to move on. I won't hold y'all long. I know we got a week-long journey. I was telling my wife, pastor told me to uh, get a receipt for any meals I accommodated. You know, then he said, get a receipt for whatever you do. I told my wife, I said, shoot, babe, I'm going to give you a new Mercedes and get a Mercedes. <laughs> <laughs> Just joking now. <laughs> yeah, but uh, we thank God for being here. I also had told, uh, talked to a preacher friend of mine a few years back. I said, man, you know, I said, I ain't been around here. I ain't heard from nobody over there in a long time. I said, maybe I said something I shouldn't have said, huh? They ain't calling me back over there. But thanks be to God, when I left the last time, Pastor told me that y'all was going to do some remodeling, rebuilding, and thank God. God is good. This is very beautiful. Amen. Amen. Yeah, I guess I better move on. I, uh, let us pray. Father God, again, we come to thee as humble as I know how at this moment. Father, I ask to let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable and pleasing in thy sight. And Lord, I be careful to give you all the honor, all the praise, and all the glory. Again, thank you, Lord. In Jesus' holy name we pray. Amen. Amen. I had a, a fruit of members telling me about the messages that I preached last time I was here, and I mean, I don't know, six or seven years ago. And I told him, I said, well, what was it? I don't know, so I don't preach the same thing. <laughs> yeah, but praise the Lord. We're going to do what the Lord tells us to do. Amen? Amen. In your Bibles, in the book of Matthew, your Matthew 11th chapter, the 15th verse, and also Romans 10, and 10. Matthew 11.15 reads, He that has an ear, 
to hear, let him hear. Romans 10 and 10 reads, For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Amen. The Bible says, church, with the heart, man believeth unto righteousness. You're not going to forget that, are you? With the mouth, confession is made unto salvation. Amen. With the heart, man believeth unto righteousness. What is the heart? I mean, what is the heart? Most of us, most of us say that the heart is just a engine of energy, weighs about three quarters of a pound, that beats about 60 to 80 times a minute, or about on an average of 72 times a minute, or 4,320 times an hour, or 100,000 times a day or 40 million times a year. What is the heart? Most of us say the heart is just a pump that pumps blood through our system. Our heart is to us just like a water pumping station that pumps water from here to there. Our hearts pump blood all over our system. So what is the heart, church? That heart that I'm talking about, you know, it don't never get any rest. The heart never celebrates the 4th of July, never celebrate Labor Day or, or Christmas or Easter. This heart has to beat when the rest of you take a rest. When, when you lay down this old tired body, the heart is still functioning. Running blood from your toenail to the top of your head. But church, Paul was not talking about that heart. No, no, no. Paul was talking about the intellect. Paul was talking about the inward man. See, when you see me, you don't see the real me. You don't see the real me standing here. You just see the shell that I live in. Y'all going to pray, man? It's another me on the other side where I am. See, the heart can think. The heart can believe. The heart can reason. The Bible says from the heart flows the issues of life. Didn't you hear David say, creating me a clean heart, O oh God, and renewing me the right spirit? It is something about the heart that's got to be right. Paul says your heart is not right. Create in me a clean heart, huh? And you can't blame the other parts of your body for doing wrong many times because it's in your heart. Huh? Didn't you hear Jesus say, you heard where it's been said of them of old, thou shall not kill. But I say, if you hate your brother, you already committed murder. Where? In your heart. I heard him say, you got to love the Lord with all your heart. And I wonder today, church, I wonder today if somehow they could take a picture of our hearts, what would we see? I wonder if our spiritual heart live in a glass house. I wonder how fast would we rush to get a curtain to cover up our old hearts. Do I have a witness? You see, when your feet start walking crooked, you can't blame it on the feet, huh? They got the crookedness from the heart, huh? When a man or woman tell a lie, you can't blame the mouth. The mouth was doing what it was told to do. The lying started, y'all going to help me, ain't you, in the heart. When somebody say I wasn't aiming to say that, it slipped out. Can't nothing come out if it wasn't already in there. It started from the heart. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You got to get your heart right. You got to get your heart right with God. With the heart, man believes unto righteousness. I think I need to say that one more time. With the heart, man believes unto righteousness. 
So you got to let your heart believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. And you know some of us think to be saved, you got to know everything. Yeah, some of us think you to be saved, you got to know everything. Well, I better tell you, you don't have to know everything about your digestive system in order for you to eat bean, peas, ham hock, neck bone, chili, cabbage, and pig feet. Huh? Or you don't have to know how fast sound travels to answer when your mother calls your name. Huh? You don't have to know all the ingredients in a chair in order to get up and see about your child when he or she is crying. Or y'all going to pray with me this morning. You don't have to know what time the sun rose or if it's 93 million miles away from here to recognize your loved one's face when you see them, huh? Like so, you don't have to know that there's 66 books in the Bible. Have I got a witness? You don't have to know that there's 1,189 chapters, 31,214 verses, 773,746 words, 3,566, 480 letters in the Bible for you to be saved. All you need to know is with the heart man believeth unto righteousness. And when you talk about the heart to believe, don't go bamming on your chest. Because this heart is not found in your chest. But with the heart of your mind, you must believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. I got to quit. I got to quit. Let me move on. Well, a blind man, church, may not be able to see, but he can believe. huh? Deaf and dumb man may not be able to talk, but he can believe. huh? Crippled man may not be able to run, but he can do what? Believe. A broke man may never be able to buy a brand new house, but he can believe. The Bible says, ye that believe shall be saved. I got one more thing I got to say something about, and that's that mouth. Help somebody. We got to take the ears and use the ears as a highway to get to the heart. You got to take the heart and believe it. But then after you hear and after you to believe, I never better tell you, don't confess to after you believe. You see, you can't brag about your possession until you confess. And you got to possess first before you confess. You see, too many of us have been confessing and haven't been possessing. What you mean, preacher? Huh? I don't believe y'all hear me. I'm going to say it one more time. Too many of us have been confessing and we haven't been Possessing. We've been confessing that we're saved, but we haven't been possessing salvation. You're not saved because mama was saved. You ain't saved because your daddy was a preacher. You ain't saved because you spent all your life in the church. I tell you what you can do. You can take a Ford Pinto to the Cadillac deal. I know a lot of y'all don't know what that is. You can take a Ford Pinto to the Cadillac deal and lock it in the garage and leave it there all of 2023. And when you go down in 24, 24, you ain't going to find no new Cadillac in this place. You're going to still find a little old Pinto parked there. Huh? Well, church, this mouth creates some problems. Yeah, yeah, this mouth creates some problems. The mouth gives the Did you know there are many problems that have occurred because of your mouth? Many lies have been told because of something else, huh? Many homes have been destroyed because of something else. There are many homes that are fatherless right now because of a mouth. There are many homes motherless right now because of somebody's mouth. You'll be surprised to know how many black eyes have been caused because of a quick mouth. Huh? How many teeth have been knocked out? Because of somebody's mouth. Matter of fact, how many churches have been destroyed, huh? Because of a squabble, because somebody's mouth, you got to learn how to control your mouth. You see, sometimes it's too late for you to say, uh oh, huh? Because some things you say you can't take back. It is said, church, that. Right now, scientists now are working on a machine that you can put it in your living room and turn on that machine, and it will capture and bring by everything you ever said in that room. Now, I don't know how y'all feel about 
but I'll be in trouble. <laughs> if they would capture everything I ever said in my room, you see, because sometimes what we say is uncalled for. But Jesus had Paul to write, you need to confess with your mouth. What Paul was saying was that after you hear the word, after you trust and believe in the Lord, that you shouldn't be selfish. You should tell the dying world that Jesus died for your sin. And I think, know most of us think God gave us our mouth to curse our brothers out. That God gave us our mouth to talk down on our sister, but God gave us our mouth to glorify him. God gave us our mouth so he can get to pray. And I heard him say that you should not walk around with hush mouth. He said, first, you are my witnesses. Witnesses where? We are witness in Jerusalem. That's your home. Huh? In Judea, which is on the outside of your home. In Samaria and the other most parts of the whole round world. Then I better tell you, you are the light of the world. Then I heard him say, let your light so shine that men might see your good work and glorify your Father, which are in heaven. Well, what that mean? I mean, if the Lord saved your church, you ought to be willing to tell somebody, I know I've been saved. If you know the Lord brought you from darkness to the marvelous light, you ought to be willing to tell somebody else. And then I'm going to close with verse 13. Verse 13 says, whosoever will shall call upon the name of the Lord. That's in your Bible, isn't it? Shall be saved. And I'm glad, church, the Bible didn't say if Johnny Lewis called upon the Lord. Uh, because then Pastor Franklin would feel like he'd been left out. I'm glad, church, that the Lord did not say if my disciples called upon the name of the Lord. Because none disciples would feel like they've been left out. I'm glad the Lord didn't say that if the black man called upon my name, then that means that the white man, the green, the yellow, the brown man would be left out. I'm glad, church, the Lord did not say if the rich man called upon my name, they shall be saved. If that's what the case, me personally, would be left out of this salvation. And I'm glad that he didn't say the well-dressed, huh? Because the raggedy man would have been left out. I'm glad, church, that he didn't say that ye that live in old muggy, or ye that live in Texas, or ye that live in California, or Fort Smith. Uh, but I heard him say, who, whosoever will, shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Well, I want you to stop grumbling so much, but call upon the name of the Lord. Stop complaining so much, but call upon the name of the Lord. And I got one more thing I got to tell you before I go to my seat. Yes, Lord. He said, call upon the name of the Lord. Well, what is the Lord's name? Some of y'all know what the name is. His name is Jesus. Y'all heard that name before, haven't you? Jesus, 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 huh? Jesus was his name when he was a baby. Jesus was his name when he was in the crater, huh? Jesus was his name when he was in the temple at 12 years old. Jesus' church was his name when he was full grown. Jesus was his name when he was hanging out there on a cross. Jesus was his name when he got up early, oh, Lord, Sunday morning, huh? I wish I had a witness. You know what, church? Uh, you, church, you can be baptized in the name of Jesus. You can cast out devils in the name of Jesus. Huh? You can pray in the name of Jesus. You can be saved, church, in the name of Jesus. I heard him say, at the name of Jesus, church, Every knee shall bow and every tongue must confess at the name of Jesus. And you do remember, don't you? You remember the third chapter of Acts, huh? There said a lame man 
from his mother's womb, waiting on a little silver and gold. But I heard Simon Peter say, oh, lame man, I ain't got no money. I know that's bad English, Pastor. I ain't got no money. We dropped our net about three years ago and haven't received a payday yet. Oh, yes, help me, Lord. But I tell you what I got right here. He said, I got a name here, huh? I wish I had a witness. I got a name here. He said, in the name of Jesus of Christ of Nazareth, oh, rise up and you walk, I tell you. Oh, I got to leave y'all now. But if you got a problem and you don't know how to solve it, all you got to do is call on the name of Jesus. Call on Jesus, oh, the lily of the valley, huh? Call on Jesus, the bright and morning star. Call on Jesus, he's a rock in a weary land. Call on Jesus, somebody say he's a bridge over troubled water. Ain't he all right? I said he's all right. And I know you already know what he did. He stayed right there all day Friday. He stayed right there all day Saturday. He stayed there, church. Oh, Saturday night, but early, oh Lord, early Sunday morning, he got up with all power in his hand. Ain't he all right? I said, ain't he all right, church? All you got to do is just believe. God bless you.